Hey guys, got a new tutorial for you called Guano and Sulfur. Initially it was called Batshit Sulfur, but I figured that wouldn't play so well. And the reason I chose it is because those are the ingredients that you need for a fireball in D&D. I'm a nerd. It's all right. So are you. Probably. If you're on this channel, you are. But anyway, the first thing I'm going to do here is just put in a couple of sketch layers and every time I do one, I'll drop the opacity and make a new layer and do another one. Um, just keeping it real simple here. But the main thing I wanted to talk about was color theory and how I pick the colors in this piece. So you'll see after I get a couple of these um, different sketches down, I'm going to quickly start to block in the background. And the thing is with the background, I'm going to put in my, uh, this like blue color and it is, um, going to dictate all the different colors in this piece, right? So the way I'm going to base my colors is I'm going to pick them from blue, right? I'm not going to pick like brown for wood. What I do is I desaturate the blue. So I select the blue and then desaturate it. And I'm going to do that for all of his clothes too. So it's, a really easy, I don't want to call it a hack, but it kind of is for color theory where, you know, you want something to appear orange or brown in a blue scene. All you have to do is desaturate it. It's still blue. Like his clothes are still blue, but they don't look blue because color is relative, right? Um, the biggest way that I learned this was doing like master studies of beer stats, oil paintings. And, um, I would color pick different spots in the painting. I remember I did one that was like a sunset and the sky obviously looked really blue and there was like all these really nice bright oranges. So, you know, you'll go look at the orange and color pick that and it's a nice bright orange, but then you color pick that blue and it's just a desaturated orange. It's still orange. You're like, how is this possible? Well, it's just because the only way that your brain sees color is based on the colors next to it. So like the mast in the background and the floor are all blue. They're just desaturated. So when you do that, your colors tend to live in the same family and feel harmonized instead of like really dissonant and, and, and obnoxious and like they like, they don't work together. Um, another trick to do is just, if you keep the more desaturated your colors are, the more harmonized they'll become because they're closer to each other on the color wheel. Um, this guy, Marco Bucci has a really good video about that and you should check it out because he goes into like super deep depth about why that works. Um, and he's a better teacher at explaining this stuff than I am for sure. But, you know, that's kind of the main way that I pick my colors. I'll also, you know, I'll pick a color and I'll just kind of slide that hue slider a little bit left or right and then brighten and darken. And that way I'm not like going crazy. I'm not just randomly picking a color, but I'm picking based off of what my background already is. And when you do that, then everything stays closer together. It's more of like an analogous color scheme, I guess, right? But this one, in this case, it's kind of a, like a complimentary palette because I have these crazy oranges in there, but everything else is sort of desaturated. I hope that helps. I don't know. Um, but it's definitely the best way I've found for picking colors. And it keeps everything, like, it's easy. You don't have to, like, over, it's, you're not overthinking it, you know? Like, I remember I've noticed I've gotten better at it too. Cause when I was, um, oh, I don't know, a couple of years ago, right. Every painting I would do, I'd have to put like a gradient map over the top and like do all this crazy color correction. And nowadays when I get to that point, I might do a little bit of color correction with the curves at the end, but that's pretty much it. Cause I'm happy with how the colors came out from the start. I don't feel like anything looks weird. Um, one thing I did do on this painting is I started out with a blue shadow color and then I started painting in that light along his back, which was like a green. And I was like, everything is too cold. So instead I took my shadow color and I made it red 
And now I had like a red green thing happening. It's like a green light. And then usually you want like whatever your shadow color is to be the opposite hue of your light color. So if you have a green light, you should have a red shadow. If you have a, <clears throat> a yellow light, you should have a blue shadow. So, you know, thinking about that, but it, keeping it subtle, you know, you don't want to like, when I say red and green, I mean, they're like very desaturated versions of red and green. And then as far as these other colors in him, his, uh, his outfit, you know, the brown actually shifted into brown. It's like, what I do is like, okay, for, so for, like I said, well, I want brown, I'm going to go desaturated blue. But then if I get all the way to gray and it's not brown enough, then I'll move my slider over to orange. And then I will start creeping it back to the right a little bit into the saturation. And that's how I'll kind of pick my color. I'm never just going to go straight orange. The other thing on top of, I guess, color that you should be careful about is contrast, right? Like right now there's a lot of contrast in his outfit and his clothes. And eventually I'm going to have to sort of dull down the contrast, like in his pants and stuff, because it's just overwhelming and it's kind of distracting. So being cognizant of how bright and how dark you make things, you have to do the same thing with color. Like both of them, I think like the more reserved you are, the better. Like if I wasn't as reserved in this painting, this fireball that I'm doing right now wouldn't look as bright and like as dynamic. Um, if I had bright whites in the background, bright whites in his hair, like that fireball would just, it wouldn't be as dramatic. So thinking about like how you want the final piece to look and like what value should be the brightest and kind of working backwards from that, I think is a, can be helpful. It's a really tricky thing though. I think, you know, I still remember my first digital paintings, like the worst, the most egregious sin in all of them was my values. Like they were always blown out. Like I'd go to white way too soon and I'd go to black way too soon. And I'd have these like black shadows and white blown out nasty highlights. And it is just totally natural and normal part of starting to paint. Um, you think something looks good. And so you push it further instead of scaling it back and keeping it more subtle. Um, I'm sure I'm still do that now. You know, I'm sure if somebody better than me looks at this, they'd be like, Oh yeah, these 10 things are looking like shit and you should fix it. So it's just something to be aware of. And like the sooner you're aware of it, the sooner you can kind of get on top of that stuff and, and fix it. So anyway, I think that's pretty much it for this painting. Um, it was a lot of fun. If you like Critical Role, or if you haven't seen it, you should go check it out. It's on YouTube and Twitch. I listen to it on a podcast while I'm painting most of the time, just because it's awesome. So, yeah, let me know in the comments if you, you know, have any more color questions or whatever. And uh, yeah, do the like and subscribe thing because I need the help. So, see you guys.